Hi guys. We're gonna take a out paste, and this is of my strapper. Let's get started. Pansapro is very resilient to pests and diseases. As such, you won't need to worry a lot about them. But that's not to say you shouldn't be resilient. While it is resistant, it is by no means immune to them, so they can happen. Monster Pro plant is a medium maintenance plant. If you want to know how to care Monster Pro, see this video. Be sure to keep it away from infested plants as it is uh, vulnerable to pest infestations that could uh, bring disease or uh, devastation to the plant. Like Manasara siltepecana, Manasara pro can also be infested with different pests if placed near an infected plant. The most common pests, if they do occur, are spider mites, mealybugs, and a scale. These pesky creatures will chew on your plants causing damage. In case you didn't know, there are over 1000 kinds of spider mites, so they're not all the same. If you spot any of them, you want to take immediate action. Treatment involves spraying with insecticidal soup. Aphids, scales, mealybugs, and spiders attack the leaves and the stems of the monstro group. These four pests were known to set the healthy cells of the plant, responsible for the nourishment and growth of the monstro group. Scale insects are mistakable ones you know what to look for, but they can be challenging to identify the first time. That's because they don't look like insects and the adults never move once. They have attached themselves to the plant. However, these immobile adults can lay hundreds of eggs, which hatch into larvae called uh, crawlers. These travel to uh, new feeding sites before latching themselves on. That's why, unfortunately, you'll uh, rarely find just uh, one scale sex on a plant. If you have uh, seen one, it's best to treat the whole plant since there is very likely a scale you can't see. First off, if you notice a scale on one of your plants, be sure to isolate it to keep nearby plants from the being infected as well. If there is a lot of a scale on one part of the plant, you may choose to prune of the affected area instead of treating it. The scale is resistant to many of the spraying techniques that work on many other houseplants pests, possibly because of their hard shells and tenacity in attacking to the plant. Scraping them of the plant manually seems to be easiest method, although it can be tedious if there is a lot of scale on your monster pool. Cut, swap, depth in rubbing alcohol and apply to the scale is a tried and true method for killing these uh, pests. The alcohol dissolves their shell, killing the insects quickly. You will need to be vigilant with this method, making sure to treat all visible scale insects and checking every few days for new ones. Any insects left behind uh, will quickly reproduce so it's essential to eradicate all of them. Spider mites are members of the arachnid family that consume the tissues and sap of plants. Like their better known relatives, they can spin fine webs, usually in the joints where a petiole or a stem branches off. Unfortunately, if you see the pest on one of your plants, they have likely already spared to others. They are very mobile and actually use breezes to move from place to place. They can also travel on people or pets that happen to brush up against them. So be sure to check all plants and provide preventative measures to your collection. When treating a spider mites, it's important to know what conditions these pesky pets like. They tend to show up more often in winter since they like warm, dry environments, like your furnace heated home. To prevent them, you can change the environment by increasing humidity and decreasing temperature in winter. However, they can hibernate 
so this will only slow down their activity. To get rid of an existing infestation, you will need to treat the plant. Luckily, spider mites can be knocked off a monster proof very easily, putting the plant into a shower or hosing it down outside can quickly reduce the population. You can also wipe the leaves with 70% rubbing alcohol or a horticultural soup to kill any remaining mites. Yeah. Blue oil is effective against spider mites, but it's not recommended to use a traditional chemical insecticide as that can kill off a, a spider mites natural predators and actually make the problem worse. Instead, stick to more natural treatments and be uh, persistent. Notice little wildfires buzz on your monster approval, you probably have a millibugs. Millibugs are a species of a scale without a shell. They suck the juice out of the leaves and cause spotting and discoloration while leaving behind sticky clear go called honeydew this honeydew is also sign of a mealybug infestation even if you don't see any actual bugs and so it got me stuff on the leaves the females produce this when they lay eggs to get rid of mealybugs start by dipping a cotton swab in rubbing alcohol and dapping any bugs and cut you see this kills the bugs instantly. Millibugs like a hide, though, so give your plant a throw spray down with neem oil as well. Once you discover aphids on a plant, it's uh, super important to act fast because they can spread like white fire to your uh, surrounding house plants. Once the original host plant becomes uh, overcrowded, uh, the aphids will uh, start migrating and they can easily crawl or uh, fly to other plants. The first things I do once I find aphids on uh, indoor plants is to wash to plant with soup and water. You can do this task uh, in the sink or in the shower for larger house plants. To air start, uh, you can spray the leaves of the infested house plants with a, a strong stream of uh, water to rinse off all of the aphids that you see. Uh, then wash the leaves with a weak solution uh, of a mild liquid soup and water. Soupy water kills aphids on contact. Before using uh, any type of soup solution for aphids on your plants, Test it one leaf first to make sure uh, the soup won't damage the plant. Some plants are uh, sensitive to soapy water and the leaves can be damaged. With diseases, root rot is your biggest enemy. This is very problematic if it happens because there is no cure. As such, you want to prevent it. The only thing you can do is trim the mushy and black roots and repot a drier spot. Then hope the plant recovers. When placed in a shady place for a long time, the plant will experience sun deficiency. This deficiency will make the plant incapable of photosynthesis. We showed you two problems of Monstera Peru in this video. We talked about iron deficiency of Monstera Peru and sunburn. When the leaves turn yellow, the plant was overwatered. When this occurs, halt watering the plant for a day or two and wait until the top part of the soil decreases its moisture. You can identify it when the top part will dry up. When the leaves turn brown, the leaves were burned. So you need to place the plant in another location where it can only receive indirect light. Thanks for watching guys, have a great day, bye.